episode seven. You are listening to the new Glam Gal podcast, the podcast where style meets confidence. Conquer the frustration of trying on clothes and learn to dress and love the body you are in. There are no size or weight requirements here. I'm your host, Miss J. Join me, won't you? Hey, Glam Gal. Welcome back to the podcast. When I was younger, we had exchange students. I'm not sure how my mom got involved in the exchange student program, but we were a host family to exchange students from all over the world. We had students staying with us from Indonesia, Japan, China, France, Spain. We had so much fun with our exchange students. We learned so much from them and they learned, at least I hope they learned, a lot from us. One of our favorite pastimes was when we got new exchange students was to bring them to an American buffet. Now as a child, I was always really weirded out by their excitement at an American buffet. I was always kind of grossed out by American buffets, except for the dessert aisle, of course. But we had a particularly large one where I lived, and we would take our exchange students there. The food wasn't so great. What was great was watching their amazement at the sheer amount of food that you could eat as much as you wanted. There were piles and piles of food available to you as much as you wanted, as many times as you wanted, and no one was going to criticize you for going back for three, four, five. They were also amazed by the fact that you could take a bite of something and simply decide you didn't like it and leave it there for someone to carry off to the trash bin. So what do buffets have to do with style and confidence? Everything. Today's podcast episode is all about other people's opinions and the smorgasbord buffet that is available to you when people offer you their thoughts. So like any good American buffet, you have a salad aisle, some fruit there, possibly, some cold veggies, but this aisle is largely abandoned. It's also weirdly placed usually and has a bunch of ice, so all the veggies and fruit are on ice. There's also usually a weird fly problem. Then we have the meat aisle, the poultry aisle, potentially some fish. Then we have a whole thing of side dishes, an aisle dedicated to desserts, an aisle dedicated to soups. Sometimes under the warm heat lamps, you have delicious things sort of stewing in their own juices. Mmm, broccoli at room temperature, stewing in its own juice. Mmm. Now, people love to tell you their opinion. They love to tell you what they think. But instead of taking on all of their thoughts, think of it like a buffet. A smorgasbord, if you will. You have veggies available to you. You have poultry. You have meat. You have dessert. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we need a little vegetable. Sometimes we need a little fruit. Sometimes the occasion calls for just the right bite of dessert. Thoughts are the same way too. Now, it used to be that when someone would offer me their opinion, I would immediately jump to fulfill whatever it is they were telling me I should do, change, or keep. It would cause so much anxiety and stress in me because I used to be a big-time approval seeker, And I felt like, well, if they're telling me, it must be important. Therefore, I must follow through. I must take action on these words that are being thrown my way. But as I've gotten older, and as I've done more of this thought work, I realize, just like my brain comes up with thoughts that I don't always have to believe are true, people are offering me their thoughts all the time. Now, I've noticed that sometimes people couch these thoughts in sneaky little ways. For example, we have the friend who's always worried about you. I'm just really worried about you. I noticed you're eating a lot more lately. 
or you're not eating at all. Or I'm worried you look a little skinny. I'm worried you look a little fat. I'm worried you look a little in between. You know those ladies? These people are well-meaning, they're well-intended, for the most part. But these are just thoughts they're offering you. They're offering you worry. Or at least sneaky thoughts couched as worries. And you get to decide what you make it mean when they tell you something. That's up to you. Another sneaky way that other people's thoughts present themselves are presupposition. Basically, in the way someone asks you a question, they're guiding you towards a specific answer. Let me show you how this would look in real life. Here's an example. So I guess you've stopped trying for kids. That presupposes that you even want children or that you're capable of having them. Or try this one on for size. Oh, are you feeling more peace because you finally gave up on diets? Well, it presupposes that you were on a diet, that you need a diet, and that you were not at peace while on a diet. Or your mother calls and asks, have you tried that new anti-aging lotion I sent you? It presupposes that you need an anti-aging lotion and that you would even want one. So these are some sneaky ways that people offer you their opinions and they truly believe they're being helpful in some way. Another sneaky way people attempt to share their opinions with you is they posit it in the form of a question. Have you considered X? Have you tried Y? What do you think about Z? A lot of times they're just leading you. Maybe you never thought about X, Y, or Z. Maybe you really don't care. Maybe you didn't ask for a solution. So again, these are some sneaky ways people offer you their opinions. And then you have the loudmouth friend who outright will say, what you should have done was, you have any friends like that? What you should have done was, what you could have done was. I love those people. Now, why do you need to work on how you manage other people's opinions? Is because when it comes to style and confidence, Opinions are like, well, everyone has one. I'll leave that right there. So it's up to you what opinions you choose to take on and what opinions you choose to assign meaning and emotion. People's thoughts, which is really what an opinion is, someone else's thoughts that they're offering you, are completely neutral until you have a thought about them. So let me give you an example of this. We're standing in a room, being fabulous. Betty walks in, and she says, Miss J, I love your dress. You hear her, and I hear her. The only words she has spoken is, Miss J, I love your dress. And she walks on out. Now I turn to you, Glam Gal. And you say to me, did you hear what that heifer just said? She said she liked your dress. Mm-hmm, sure she likes your dress. Whoa. She just spoke some words. You may have a thought about it. I may have a thought about it. Either way, it's just a thought being offered to me, and I can decide what I make it mean. So when a girl walks in a room and offers me thoughts, they say more about her than they do about me. So I heard a girl say she liked my dress. My thought, how nice. Feeling, appreciative. Action, thank her. Result, feel thankful that I got a compliment. Any other woman could assign a different meaning. Girl walks into room, says she likes my dress. I could have a thought like, oh, she's lying. Oh, she's just jealous. Oh, that petty Betty. I know what she's really thinking, and then her brain goes haywire. When really, it was just a girl in a room uttering words. Now we can choose to make them mean something negative, we can choose them to be neutral, or we can choose to take them on as something positive. 
all of it is completely up to us. Now, just like a buffet, you can choose to take a nibble and bite, try on a thought. You could choose to leave it on the plate, or you could choose to leave it at the buffet line and not take it on at all. Now, I'm not suggesting that some people don't give constructive criticism, and I'm not suggesting that you don't take feedback when absolutely needed. Again, we all need Brussels sprouts and broccoli and vegetables and things to have a fully functioning, healthy human body and mind. Sometimes we need constructive criticism and feedback. The difference is to know in your mind what you want to make other people's thoughts mean. They could be sweet dessert or you could just choose to leave it there. Thanks for offering me the thought. All of it's available to you. It's a smorgasbord, darling, a smorgasbord. You're not required to eat everything. So, Glam Gal, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is next time you get a compliment, a sneaky little backwards, I'm worried about you, or any other type of thought from another person, look at the buffet in your mind. Is this broccoli? Is this some meaty goodness? Is this a sweet, cool dessert? Would I like to try it? Would I like to take it? and gobble it down? Or am I just going to leave it on the buffet plate? Totally up to you. All right. As always, would love to see what you're up to on Instagram. Use the hashtag newglamgal. If you would like to work on this a little bit further, because I know it's pretty difficult for a lot of ladies to fully integrate this concept into everyday practice, please feel free to go to judithgatan.com click on the work with me button to sign up for a free style session. We can work out all of this confidence work and a 30 minute free sesh. All right, let's get it glam gal. Miss J out.